Welcome to Dynamo's Dozen, the podcast that I bring you each and every single week where I talk about whatever may be on my mind from pro wrestling, sports, entertainment, music, movies, muesli, fresh shocks of jocks, and everything in between, never forgetting the talk. And here we are once again, a familiar face joins me, Mr. Niall Hogan, the host of the upper tier, your favorite football show and mine. Welcome back, Noel. How are you, my friend? A pleasure to be back. And uh, congrats on the start of the new channel. It's gone well. For you. Yeah, we're up and running finally. We're up and running finally. Mm. And, and same to you. Same to you. Cheers. Yeah. Um, nice to be uh, nice to be independent and free of the DPN now. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the the shackles that divide us now in fairness um it's great to see everybody kind of going their own way and kind of making it work individually as well so shout out to all the pods uh including my own on the slab of course i have to say that um with, with carl and greg and of course retrotainment is up there as well and of course carl's got his uh king rolls court back in action as well you've got the upper tier um so it's nice to see it's nice to see the shows kind of continuing on in a different format and kind of it's like letting the kids go, you know, and saying right, that's it. You know, I think we should have a opportune moment now for us to have you know Fleetwood Mac go your own way playing right around now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, yeah. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. As uh, as that bird with the blonde hair in Canada, that one American Idol sang. Don't know her name, so <laughs> someone will out there. What doesn't Haven't get got a clue stronger. what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, she was nice. She grew in more ways than one. Um, so <laughs> as they do. <laughs> of course, I am your favorite host, um, with the most, and usually uh causes. Whoa, 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 favorite host. Whoa, 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 whoa. Chill out there now. I taught you everything you knew. <laughs> Shut up. You did. And more. And more. <laughs> or everything you knew, past tense, including everything you know. Everything you knew, <laughs> will, or ever will. <laughs> Shout out to the hitman. Um yeah, so today we're we're gonna we're gonna do our um and by the way. Thank you, everybody, for uh, for for reaching out and you know hitting me up with the with the Jeff Jarrett podcast. There it was a, it was a great first guest for the relaunch of the first Dynamo's Dozen um, solo YouTube channel. So thanks a lot for uh, for reaching out and, and kind of giving me feedback on that. And there's going to be a lot more great guests. One which I can probably announce at the end of the show because you don't want to give too much away at the start of the show. In fact, you could probably you could probably give one away in the middle as well, couldn't you? You could probably give them two tonight. Well, I could give them two actually. I think you're right. Yeah, you maybe. could give maybe one in the them... middle to appetite to you know wet our appetite, and then the big one at the end. All right, fair enough. We'll do that. So we'll do that. So look, only because it's you, only because <laughs> it's you. Um, but tonight we did promise our fans there on social media um, over the weekend. I did promise that we would have a Royal Rumble preview. And um, not only are you known for your amazing stats and insight and uh, previewing of football, but you're also very, very well adept because you do it for your living <laughs> and your day job <laughs> <laughs> with pro wrestling. So there's no one better to have on to kind of talk about this upcoming Royal Rumble, the first ever Royal Rumble that will be on a Saturday, by the way, which is pretty cool for us um, European viewers. Um, for, for people who work. For people who work, <laughs> exactly. exactly. Work. You know, all those headband-wearing motherfuckers that can just sit in their couch all day. It's like, you know, woo, woo. Fair play to you is more power to you, is in fairness. I wish I could do that. <laughs> well, well, we indirectly provide the bear. Just saying. Oh, well, you know. It's, I agree. Price has gone up as well. So, um, you know, somebody's got to foot the bill. Um, so this year's Royal Rumble, kind of interesting, isn't it? Because there's a lot of um, a lot of questions out there as to who could show up, who might not show up. Are we going to kind of get 
the same level of disappointment that we get some years where you're expecting some big names and then they don't show up. Um, this one is kind of interesting because it feels like WWE are trying to pull something out of the bag here, aren't they? Um, Definitely. Yeah. It, it kind of like, it all kind of transpired um, the day before day one because the shit hit the fan when Reigns announced that he had contracted the virus. Yeah. And all the best laid plans just got fucked in the bin yeah. <laughs> and they had to start again. Um, so um, Lesnar found himself in the, the WWE title picture. And of course, we know what happened at day one. The shout out to WWE. Day one was a really good event. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, but they had to relay out all the plans in the build up to the Rumble. And they also then obviously had to relay out all their plans for the road to WrestleMania and everything else that evolves out of that. So this has kind of been a little bit of a shitstorm for WWE to kind of pull together and kind yeah. of sell it to us in terms of we thought we were going one way and now we're going another way. Yeah. Um, in terms of everyone thought the road to WrestleMania and the Rumble would be Lesnar and Reigns and that would be the marquee match and this is what would happen. And obviously he's kind of transcended down into a different title, took the title off Big E and they've kind of gone their separate paths. Hmm. But in doing that, what they've done is now they've come to the Royal Rumble and we'll get into it later as we go through the matches. Those pats are probably going to come back together one way or another. Um, so it'll be in, it's some interesting booking coming up this week, I'd imagine, on uh, Saturday. But yeah, it, it's great, as you said, that it's a Saturday Royal Rumble so we can stay up, have a few beers, we can watch it, we can enjoy it um, and then roll on into Sunday and have a bit of a rest and recover. Um, hopefully not too disappointed, hopefully excited about the road to WrestleMania and what's going to evolve. Well, yourself um, and myself will probably be slightly a little bit drunk anyway because we will be in a beer garden on, on Saturday in, uh, in beautiful Bray. So um, mm. we hopefully we make the end, <laughs> which I think we will. <laughs> um, you know, at, at our any, any any video, any video footage from Saturday that goes up on YouTube, we accept absolutely zero responsibility for, and we we're going to be blaming it on alcohol. I plead the fifth, and I wasn't there. It wasn't me. No, hundred percent. Um, now that we're allowed in pubs again, it's really a bad <laughs> idea. Two, <laughs> locking up Irish people for two years, and then literally letting them loose all at once. This, this is, we, we have a reputation for making up for two years within a month. Within a day? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know whether a day or we won't be around to do any much more podcasts. This is true. If we make, up, true. If we make up two years of nights out. <laughs> well, we do have a commitment to our viewers, so we, we promise you we will be back next week. Um, Absolutely. Might be our final shows next week, but we will be back. Um, so let's go, go down through the, you, you have all the matches there. Um, yeah. And we're going to go through them and kind of talk talk about them individually. We won't spend too long on the individual matches and as such, but we'll just talk about what the card is looking like so far. Yeah, well, I think these aren't in any necessary order. I'm not too no. sure what the order is going to be and stuff like that. But safe to say, if you look at the two Royal Rumble matches, they're kind of open-ended. And we, we've spoken already in the previous show that we did about the Forbidden Door being open. Mm -hmm. Now, the question is, is it going to be a jar? Or is it going to be kicked off the hinges? Remains to be seen. Or is this just a ploy from WWE to get everyone excited and then drop them on their arse and go, yeah, we opened it, but kind of like, you know, we brought back guys that we already had or whatever it is, you know? Or is it actually going to be people from other organizations coming in? And there's a lot of rumor and innuendo going around about that. Uh, some of it will dissect down on the show. Um, but safe to say, the two Royal Rumble matches, um, I suppose you have to look at them in so far as WWE has released a lot of talent. So the question is, I suppose for the Women's Royal Rumble, and we'll start with that, have they even got 30 women to compete in the 30 mm -hmm. Women Royal Rumble um, with, the, with the, uh, the people that they've let go in the releases? So was it a case that they wanted to open the Forbidden Door and is this the path they're going to take? Or were they forced into doing it to, I suppose... Um, deliver their commitments of a 30 women Royal Rumble. Um, so some of the names that are in there, obviously we know as well, a lot of the talent um, at the higher end of the women's division are caught up in other matches. So they're not necessarily directly involved in this match. And that's not to say that they might not be, 
But um, they've also they've also brought back. I mean, obviously, Lita is back. Michelle McCool, Kelly Kelly, Mickey James. Um, but the big news coming out today is apparently one ex UFC women's champion has apparently resigned, and apparently is going to rock up at the Rumble and show everyone what she's about on her road to WrestleMania to redeem herself against one Becky Lynch, Ronda Rousey, which I think is big news. Well, that's that's not just big news. That's humongous news. I mean, you're talking about one of the biggest, one of the top three biggest stars in, you know, in MMA history. Um, mm. Definitely, definitely um, covered herself in glory in her stint in WWE as well. I thought she, she just grew and grew and grew as a performer. Um, and obviously, if there's one person, you know, that the company and the office are looking at to put, you know, the melty Becky Lynch in her place, that would be one Ronda Rousey, right? And she's probably due it. And she's probably due it because she kind of went a different way and stuff like that. And we all know what happened at WrestleMania with the the, the the match and stuff like that. So they're probably due a second round of that. The only thing I'm hoping in this is I'm hoping that this is not the forbidden door. I'm hoping this is just a huge comeback in the women's division, but not the forbidden door. I'd like the forbidden door to have something slightly different. Do we think... Do we think we dare say one of the biggest women stars of all time could make a history? You know the girl I'm talking about. You know that good-looking little lady that happens to be from Toronto, Ontario, and Canada. Um, do you think she could make an appearance? Who could I be talking about, Noel? Trish Stratus. Stratus, of course. Trish Stratus. Yeah. The talk is. The talk is she is going to be there. Okay. That's the talk at the moment. Again, it's another rumor going around. And there's other talk going around at the moment that a girl I know who's very close to your heart, you're a very good friends with family, <clears throat> one page potentially could be making a return wow. if she's cleared. Wow. Um, and that would be huge as well. So imagine imagine the women's Royal Rumble out there at the moment. I think at the moment they have about maybe 15, 16 names. I believe Cameron is coming back as well. She was one half of the Funka Dactyls with Naomi back in the day. Yeah. Um, so she's back as she's supposed to be back as well. So that's that's, that's through, not news really. So that's that's irrelevant, yeah. Yeah, but it's relevant to the numbers <laughs> because what happens is we still don't know what's going to come out of SmackDown, obviously. I'm only, I'm only we still don't know. I'm only shit. Uh, I was hoping you'd let me get as far as Summer Ray before you push that button. <laughs> I'd rather Summer Ray. <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, it, it it's an interesting it's an interesting lineup insofar as it's slightly diluted because of the likes of Becky being involved in a different match and all that kind of stuff. So you don't get that kind of thing. But who's to say? those other women involved in those matches couldn't end up in the Royal Rumble. We've seen it in the past. If someone drops a belt or loses a match, they automatically win kind of thing or yeah, they attack yeah. someone backstage and they find themselves in it and stuff like that. Um, so the Bow Royal Rumble matches, they're quite open-ended at the moment. I'm sure there's going to be a sprinkling of NXT talent going in there as well that hasn't been confirmed yet. Um, no doubt that'll be confirmed in the next day or so, I would imagine. I had a quick look at the betting Um from our friends, our good friends over at Paddy Power, who are one of few betting um, institutions that cover pro wrestling, which is an interesting dynamic when you think about betting and you think about pro wrestling. Um, but um, straight in at the favourite for the Women's Royal Rumble at four to one is Ronda Rousey. So the rumours must be reasonably true because I know good, Paddy Power is not that too. foolish. It is, but you're talking about a competitor who hasn't even been confirmed as returning yet, so she's not actually in the match. No, but I mean, it, it is a good price for that very, very reason. I mean, like you, 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 yeah. could, if you, if you want to turn your tenner into forty euro, if you have a spare tenner, mm. why not just go down and drop it? You know what I mean? And yeah. and, and not that we can down betting, do it responsibly. It, it's an interesting dynamic at the moment because if you look at the first say five women, I think it is in the betting. With the exception, I would say, of Bianca Belair, who was second favourite at four to one, joint favourite actually with Ronda Rousey at four to one, which is no surprise with Bianca Belair with the year or the two years that she's had, and um, that she would be there or thereabouts. Alexa is in there as well. Not sure whether she's due a comeback yet or not. She's in there at seven to one. Our girl Paige, shout out to Ricky Knight, friend of your show. 
and um, of course, yes, yeah, she's, so right, she's in she's in there at nine to one. So it would be an interesting comeback. And then our girl Bailey, who was very unfortunate in getting injured, who was absolutely lighting up the WWE with that new character she had put together, is in there also at nine to one. So you're kind of when you're getting into the girls that are in there, then the Liv Morgans and the Charlotte Flares and stuff like that, they're outside that betting at the moment. So they're 10 to one and beyond which I thought was an interesting dynamic in terms of Paddy Power and the way that they're, they're betting on it. They haven't put in, you know, the Charlottes or the Natalias or the Rhea Rippies. Of yeah, so that's actually quite interesting, to be fair. Um, there's some, it's like Paddy Power is usually, you know, have an idea on what way people are looking at it. And, you know, they're not a... <laughs> Paddy Powers for any of our European or uh, sorry for any of our European, yeah, uh, or international listeners, you know, across stateside, they're they're very, very shrewd um betting company. So mm. they would usually be doing their homework on this stuff, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, it's not like you just make a call to Seamus or you know, Finn Balor or Becky Lynch when you're over here and you, you get the sus. It's mm. it's a little bit more intricate than that, and they they know how to make money, so they could be. Could very well be mentioning some names there that have no chance of turning up, but potentially, yeah. But have which, been which, mentioned which, in tweets, which in turn becomes interesting, interesting money for them. The only thing I'm wondering is if you put a bet on one of them, I wonder what way the bet works if they don't show up. Is it traded as a non runner and you get a refund? No, I wouldn't say so. I'm not, too, I'm not too sure. I'd have to look into that. But what I would say for any of your viewers out there, if you think it's easy to bet on pro wrestling, I think in five or six years of betting on pro wrestling and I don't do it a lot. I do it mainly for the big four. I think I've only ever got either one or two bets up in that time. I've never done it purely for uh, and I, I wouldn't mind. There's been a couple of occasions, not to blow me on trumpet where I've called something and went, why the fuck didn't I go down and put that tenner? So that's why I'm, yeah. I'm imploring listeners now, if you have a spare 10 euro, $10, wherever you are, go down and put put it, just, just for fun, go down and put it on, on Ronda Rousey. Because it would be fun. And, you know, if it comes in, and even if you don't like her, you're up. So 50, 50 bucks back will clear your uh, your beer money, won't it? 100%. Now, it gets even interesting. I'm going to light you up when we get into the men's one and we start talking about the betting because there's some buttes in there that you'll Right, love. well, then let's get, into the, uh, let's get into the actual route of the road to WrestleMania then. Let's get into the actual matches. Yeah, well, before before we get into the men's one, what, what's your pick for the Women's Royal Rumble? Ronda. Who, who, you're going with Ronda. You're mm. sticking with Ronda. She's going oh, to yeah, show Oh, yeah, yeah. All right. Now, I know what you're doing now, motherfucker. You're putting me on the spot. Because, obviously, my listeners need to know what I think. Okay. I'm going to go Ronda, but I also think, personally, if Paige comes in and Trish comes in, I think they're going to be final fours where people are okay. not going to know what's going to happen. So, for my final four, Trish. I'm going to say Trish, Ronda, um, Paige, and possibly... Bianca. Cool. Um, and I think Bianca might I think it might come down to Bianca and Ronda, but I just think the star power of Ronda will elevate her there. Hey, yeah, I, I probably won't do any damage to Bianca at all. No, it's best yeah. for business. So yeah, that'd be cool. I, I would I want to reference as well. There is one Michelle McCool in the match as well. I will be from what I'm led her. to believe. Hang on, from what I'm led to believe, one Mr. Mark Calloway, the Undertaker, is going to be uh, he's going to be in attendance at the Royal Rumble. Now the talk at the moment is he's there apparently to shoot footage in relation to the new 2K game. Now I'm not sure if that's the case, but they are talking about rebooting a big star back in. And is there anyone bigger than the Undertaker? Now I'm just putting that out there. I know his woman is in the women's one. He's not the kind of man who's going to let his woman walk around backstage with all that testosterone floating around. No. So I'm just saying he's due to be there in attendance and who knows what might happen. We may see, who knows, we may even see the dead man come back, but maybe we might get the biker Ted dead man, you know? So let's see what happens. Finn Martin is definitely watching this right now going, I know where this is going. <laughs> Finn Martin has already dropped a like, a view, and a subscribe on this. Good man, Finn Martin. Shout Fair out play to you, Finn. Um, <laughs> let, let's get into the men's Royal Rumble. Um, 
again, it's a do you know, very do you similar know that, Do you not want to leave that for last and get into the matches first, no? Yeah, well, if you want, we can go that way. Yeah, where, where do you want to start? Tell me where you want to start. Uh, Lesnar Lashley? Oh, well, I mean, it's only going one way, isn't it? I wouldn't be too sure about that now. There's a number of dynamics. Finn has hit the second anyway. link now. <laughs> That's it. He's, he's <laughs> all, unliked. All, all his different YouTube accounts, he's banging them like crazy. Now, now he's hitting the dislike button. Yeah, he's hitting um, the dislike. He goes, I know where this fuck is going. <laughs> yeah. Well, well. first of all, let's let's the bit of background to this, as I spoke about earlier, is first of all, Lesnar was not really supposed to be in the WWE Championship title picture. He was supposed to be going into no. the storyline with Reigns. And obviously with the COVID and everything that fell out, he ended up in a far way for this. And obviously won it very, very impressively with an absolute bundle of F5s and broke a number of lads up. Um, I have to say, shout out to Brock Lesnar as well. I seen him last night in that cowboy hat, and he is just electric, electric at the moment. He's deadly. He had me falling off the chair, laughing my balls off today, watching the back. It was just incredible. Yeah. He just rips yeah. that piss. He even got on the weighing scales last night and kept all his clothes on just to be even heavier than Lashley, <laughs> even though we know he's heavier. But he's just taking the mick all the time. It's great. It's great um, to see Brock with that kind of personality, isn't it? Oh, loving this Lesnar at the moment. He's as good as it. Like he, he reminds me of the Lesnar that used to go up against Eddie Guerrero, where he'd yeah. come out with the Mexican gear on him and all. And he, he'd have really the, the ghetto blaster yeah. and the big own boxer, and he was down the dance. He just has so many levels to this guy, this guy that we have never explored. Mm. And it's like as if he's come back and said, You know something? I'm going to create a wave in the business again, but I'm going to absolutely rip the piss out of the internet and the fans. And it's fantastic. Yeah. I couldn't be more excited about him. Yeah, but again, um, we're looking at this match here. I think potentially if they want to bring the roads back together again post-virus, kind of Lashley has to win the belt and Lesnar has to end up in the Rumble. If the plan is not to create a, an undisputed champion and bring the belts back together. Now, that could be the case. It could be title versus title for an undisputed champion at Mania, which would be really, really cool. But the other thing is, the belt could go back to Lashley. Lesnar could end up in the Rumble, win the Rumble, and Lesnar goes on the road to WrestleMania, and he's after Reigns. Because I think the kind of Reigns-Rollins match, and we'll get into that as well, is kind of a crowbar match. Now, obviously, the boys have history with the Shield and all the other stuff and things like that and all, but it was kind of like, right, we have this match here at the Rumble with Reigns now. And it was like as if the creative were backstage and Rollins walked by in one of those lovely suit jackets now that he wears. And he said, he was in the shield. We could make a little bit of a story out of this, just as a bit of padding on the road to WrestleMania. And I think that's kind of where that came about. I don't see Reigns dropping the belt to Rollins. So it's hard to kind of get invested in it when we know the marquee match is Lesnar versus Reigns at Mania. That's that is, so does that take another famous Simone out of the question then? Or out well, of the equation, should I say? I don't know whether it takes him out of the equation because when we go to talk about the Royal Rumble match, he's mentioned in the betting. Now, the odds are quite long and quite big, but he's mentioned in the betting. And I'll just mention as well, a former Shield member is also mentioned as well. Well, there's only one person we could be talking about. And it's not Kurt Angle. No, it's Moxley. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Correct. So, like, we'll talk about that when we get on to the Rumble match. But if, if you look at it there at the moment, um, the Paddy betting Powers at the moment... are definitely getting taken to court on Monday morning. <laughs> Paddy Powers are going to be sponsoring your show in the future for these previews. That's the 100%. way it should be. Get on a Paddy Power. We don't want any of your flashy Paddy Power jocks. We want a betting voucher to give away on every show to our viewers. And that's how it should be. That's it. Um, the betting on this, Lesnar is one to two on, which means to win a tenner, you have to put 20 on. So yeah, it's we, not great. The odds, he's great. heavily his favourite, which would lead me to believe that they're probably going to potentially go title versus title. Um, Lashley is six to four. Now, the odds aren't that stark. Um, no. Six to four, you know, you know, you're, you're, you're winning a little bit of money. Well, you're um, only up, you're only up two. Do you know what I mean? You're, you're like, if you you're put, up two, so you know, 40 quid, I'll give you 60. Yeah, you know, so it's it's it, it, it's you're gonna, so to, it, you're gonna have to put a big bet on it to, to if you really want to make some money. Yeah, it, it, yeah, it's probably not a match to be betting on because we know no. that we're not sure 
from a creative point of view, what way do you want to roll into this road to WrestleMania? And we know that they have a massive stadium in Dallas and there's 110,000 seats to be sold. Two nights. Um, so two nights as well. So 220,000 seats in theory. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't know what you're thinking on this match. I'm kind of leaning towards Lesnar, but I like the dynamic of potentially him going into the Rumble as, Rumble as well. Um, so, But I think if he goes into the Rumble, he'll just decimate everyone. Yeah, I mean, look, I personally think, yeah, title for title, I like the idea of unifying the belts again. Mm. Um, I, I really do. I think Reigns has obviously had such a run now where it's not going to hurt them if, if, if Brock did. But then again, like we'll, we'll talk about Mania when it gets there. I mean, I think there could be a swear from Heyman at Mania that could potentially lead to, you know, Reigns getting both. But, but, but at the same token, there was a lot of noise this year, and especially with things starting to open up again, that, uh, as I said, that one famous Hollywood Simone might be making an appearance as well. So it's really, really hard to call at the moment. But I think if you were taking him out of the equation and you were just looking at possibly unification of both belts or some of the win both belts, listen. But then again, where does that leave the winner of the male Royal Rumble? You know what I mean? What does he fight for? Does it become a triple threat then? You know, what, what, what's... Unless, unless the winner of the Royal Rumble happens to be that Samoan that you're talking about. Uh, yeah. Then you're in a three-way. But then, but then the question, the question there is then, if he goes, if he goes in, then does he challenge Brock or does he challenge Reigns? Well, it's Reigns, obviously. Do you know what I mean? Maybe, but look, Brock versus Rock, I'm all in on that too. I know, Noel. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit the dislike button now. Come on, you know he's going after the cousin to put him in his place because he'd been fed up with his nonsense. I, I don't know. I, I think he'd be going back there to give the cousin the rub of the green. Well, I, I, oh yeah, of course. But he's going yeah. in there though, and he's gonna like it's gonna be a program building up to mania. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Mm. And uh, yeah, so does. There's a number of dynamics in this match. Um, the thing that's been forgotten about in this match is obviously Lashley at the moment, who has been outstanding as well and is such an athlete and um, a guy who doesn't have a problem carrying a title at all. So um, I, th I think with the shenanigans that Lesnar's coming up with at the moment, he kind of the belt has become a byproduct of it. Really, <laughs> it's, it's it's kind of nearly not as as important as the stuff that he's going on about and stuff like that. You know, so it's yeah. interesting dynamic. Um, we, we'll move on swiftly then to Reigns versus Rollins, which I think is the crowbar match. Um, I can't feed into it too much. I see nothing only Roman Reigns winning. Yeah, same. But there, but there is a dynamic that they did include, interesting in the video package for the matches and stuff like that. One John Moxley, Dean Ambrose was included in the video packaging, which has set the internet on fire at the moment. Now. I don't know. He's gone off. He's gone through his treatment. He's come back. He's looking good. He's pretty focused. Um, I'm not sure whether that's the place to go back to in the current climate for him. But is, is it a case that a former Shield member could show up and potentially get involved? Is this the, the forbidden door that we're talking about, the hinges getting kicked off? If Moxley was to show up and come down through the crowd, is that the door getting kicked off the hinges? Is that the, the kind of stone cold moment? You know, who knows? But then if he gets involved, you would kind of think he'd be siding towards maybe the Rollins side of things and not the Ryan side of things. So it's kind of like, how does that dynamic work? So I'm not too sure. But they, when people seen him included in the video package, which I think it's probably hard to put a shale video package together and not have John Moxley in it because mm. he was involved in nearly everything that they did. But uh, certainly it set the internet on fire there last week when these <coughs> packages were released and uh, Moxley was in it. So <coughs> interesting dynamic there. Safe to say on the betting with our good friends on Paddy Power again, <coughs> shout out to Paddy Power. Reigns is four to 11 on, so you're putting 11 on to win four. Uh, very, very tight odds. Um, probably not worth touching. Rollins is just shy of two to one. And two to one in a match like this is a big price. You really are an outsider when your opponent is four to eleven on. Okay. 
So what you, I presume you're going with your boy Rain. So we're not we're not thinking anything no. other than Rain no. here. <laughs> this this is just a fallout from day one, as far as I'm concerned. Absolutely, yeah. Um, let's get into then the Raw Women's Championship: Becky Lynch versus Dewdrop, um, which is kind of a a kind of a weird put together. I wouldn't have put this match together at all. It's kind of a strange one. Obviously, Bianca Belair was on the verge of winning the, that triple trap match. And Becky obviously got involved um, and it ended up with Dewdrop winning it. So obviously Becky was looking out of all the competitors. This was potentially the one she'd want to face because it's the easier competitor, yeah. basically, in her eyes. May yeah, not necessarily think, work out that way. Yeah, look, we don't want to spend too long on this one because I think it's mm. quite, like I said, it's a setup, isn't it, for, for Mania? Like Becky goes in as champ at Mania and, yeah. you know, there's no way of... You know, so realistically, it comes down to obviously Bianca and Ronda, which is the bigger rivalry. Well, yeah, unfortunately for Bianca, money was and best for business was mm. that's the biggest rivalry because she's obviously got two people pissed off at her, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, so I think this is a foregone conclusion, personally. Yeah, yeah, I think it, it kind of this, this could be a finisher to the pay per view, actually. It's an interesting dynamic because I think what happens is. Ronda could come in as a kind of a late entrance and she could win the Royal Rumble. And then, of course, Becky could just stroll out onto the stage and give them the stare down. Then you get the usual point towards the WrestleMania sign, yeah. that kind of thing. And that kind of be might be a nice dynamic to finish out the Royal Rumble. Yeah. Um, but on the betting on this, Becky Lynch won to 10 on. So you have to put 10 euro of your hard earned money to win to one. one. And Dewdrop is five to one. So you're winning five quid for every euro you put on, which is massive odds, massive, massive, massive outsider. So to me, this is Becky Lynch all the way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, We'll go through the the mixed tag is an interesting one. Edge and Beth Phoenix. Shout out to Beth Phoenix, who came back and looked absolutely unbelievable when Mm. attacking Maurice and Miz. Um, But this is an interesting one because this this is kind of, we've seen some of this before with these mixed tags and stuff like that. But um, the dynamic between Edge and Miz at the moment, I think is really good. And I I really liked, I don't know if you've seen Maurice when she hit that kick on Edge when he was in the corner to the head. Mm. was a really cool, like really athletic. And then obviously Beth Phoenix coming out onto the ramp and the stair down and getting involved. And and it's an interesting as well because Beth Phoenix came out and Edge, who we know was in Vikings, of course, she looked like that girl in Vikings, you know, with the plaits and stuff like that. And all. Yeah. It was really, really cool looking like. But this this is a match. Of, like, I'm, I'm, I'm invested in this match because um, I think Edge has been electric since he came back. And you can't but not like the Miz. His work and his work on the stick is outstanding at times. And the girls involved as well. I know Beth will give a good account of herself. She always He knows his role. Her. That's the thing about Miz. The great thing about Miz is he knows his role and that's it. You know what I mean? Yeah. He, he, he's, a, he's a team player. And obviously Edge is probably someone that deserves a title run again, but like he's mm. going through these these rivalries and these these programs, yeah. but like not demanding anything other than a good mm. storyline. And I think, um, yeah, I think it'll, it'll be decent. Like, I mean, I'm not expecting that amazing, but mm. it'll be a, bit of, be a bit of fun. Yeah, absolutely. The betting on this, of course, Edge and Beth are half favourites at 3 to 10 now. And well, uh, Maurice obvious, and Miz, eleven to five, just over two to one. Yeah, I think it is obvious. I think normally at the end of these stories, unless you're going to run it on further, which I doubt. Um, no, this will be the end. Of, you know, yeah, Edge, Edge would be the one to come out on top. Um, so we we roll back then. You want to do the um, the men's Royal Rumble? Um, let's get into this. Very similar to the women's Royal Rumble. Um, a kind of a dampening down of talent. Of course, they have unloaded such amounts of talent so far in the last, say, six, eight, nine months, whatever it is, um, as they prepare potentially, as, as we've said before, maybe a sale, maybe a cutting of costs, maybe COVID hurt them bad, who knows? Um, maybe they were just bloated and carrying too much talent, who knows? Don't, but, um, COVID don't yeah. fucking nothing to them. <laughs> that Saudi money is <laughs> sitting locked in a vault. Yeah, well, just looking at who's in, I mean, some of the names are in there. Of course, Kevin Owens who we, we love, who's an outstanding competitor. AJ Styles is in there. As I go down through the list, Sami Zayn's in there. But um, the inclusion of one, Johnny Knoxville, um, is an interesting dynamic. And I know you've had words in the past about Bad Bunny and guys like this being involved. 
Um, what would you think of Johnny Knoxville and he has the short out future champion? They're not going to go all Russo now on this guy, are they? Not going to push him to the moon and, and throw a belt on him and do all this silly stuff now, are they? Well, I'm glad you brought up the name Russo. Um, yeah, because I hope they don't go down that road. Um, no. But I think now is about midway through where we can announce a guest before we announce the Royal Rumble. Absolutely. You brought up Vince Russo because a lot of people... I've heard the story that one um, Asian manager, the master of the selfie, happened to sue WCW because of something that Vince Russo done, or apparently done. Um, and Sonny Ono is going to be my guest next week to talk about that and to talk about many other things as well. So there you go. Midway point. Mm-hmm. Boom. You set see, me up. See the, nice, see the way I just segued into that for you there. For you set me up for the three-pointer. No bothers, Michael That's Jordan. In the Absolutely. Um, no, I think not. Look, I, th- I think Knoxville's. Uh, look, it, it's the way wrestling's going, isn't it? I mean, I don't, I don't ever kind of condone any um, of these guys in, in any kind of wrestling format. But the way it's going, you kind of have to evolve with it. And I think Knoxville's a fun enough character that he'll probably come in for two seconds and get thrown out. Now, if he stays in there and starts throwing people out, that'll probably bother me. But at the same time, I just I'm a fan of Johnny Knoxville. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's something I like about yeah. him. So yeah, you yeah. know the one thing the one thing we know about Johnny Knoxville is we know that he has quite a high pain threshold. Yeah, so we so know he, he could take a bit of a beating. <laughs> now, I don't know whether he could take an F five beating or something like that, but he can certainly take a bit of punishment. Yeah, and I'm not sure I'm not sure what he could potentially dish out. But listen, it's a he'll fun be a bit, inclusion. He'll be a bit of crack, though. You, you know, know what I mean? I could see him flying down the ramp in a trolley or something like that. Like, you know, just <laughs> real jackass kind of stuff. Yeah, all. So he'll bring a fun element to it. There's no yeah. doubt about it. Yeah. Um, but again, this one is quite open-ended as well. There's still a few people to be announced. There's obviously a few comebacks, no doubt about it. And some NXT inclusions and stuff like that as well. So it's hard to look at the lie of the land. The one thing that people haven't spoke about when I was going through the internet today, having a look, no one has spoke about the dynamic that one Rey Mysterio was in there and his son. Mm. And it's this where we lay the groundwork for the father and son feud. Potentially where the father, where either the father, where either the father eliminates the son or the son eliminates the father. I think it would be awesome for the son to eliminate the father. Be like, what? What are you doing? Mm. You know, or yeah. if we got a heel turn, Ray. <laughs> yeah. I just it. don't know. I, I don't know whether I can buy into a heel turn, Ray, but I could buy into a heel turn, Dominic. Yeah, but like you're holding me back. You won't let me go my own yeah. way. You know what I mean? We said yeah, this at you the start have, of the show. The name of the show imagine, should be Go Your Own Way. Royal yeah, Rumble. You, you, you can imagine them coming out on Monday Night Raw with I'm Your Puffy t shirt on him or something like that and go, He was and he's right all along, Ray. Yeah. yeah, and yeah, you no. could lay that dynamic in there and stuff, you know. So that that's an interesting one, but I didn't see anyone speaking about that on the internet. That a fa- apparently the father and son are in there, so that's interesting. Um, in, in terms of comebacks, there's a lot of ben talk Ballard has been itself, out yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not too sure about that, but he's oh. in there, and if you do fancy a punt on him, he's twenty to one. So yeah, a fiver yeah. will give you back a hundred if that's so. If you're around the Bray area and you happen to see me and Noel in, uh, you know, in the Martello, we're willing to do our own odds as well. No problem. We'll give you, we'll give you fifteen to one if you want. It's no bothers. Just saying. Um. So that's so that's interesting. So we've got. We've got Ray. We've obviously got the likes of Finn Balor in there. We've got a lot of kind of regular talent that people are used to seeing. Um, what about... Well, what we're basically saying is don't bet on Finn Balor, but if you do want to bet on Finn Balor and you're in Bray and you want to come over and buy us a point, that's absolutely fine as well. We'll give you 15 to 1 odds. No problem. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you want to come get your money after you win it, then you can call us. Um, now, in terms of 15 to 1 odds, what we're talking about is you buy us 15 points and we yeah. will buy you one. Yeah. 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 yeah we're not, there's no, no if, physical money transactions in this yeah. deal. <laughs> but if you are a resident of Bray and you do happen to fall into Paddy Powers on Saturday and you don't bet on Finn Balor, 
you should take a long hard stare in the mirror. I think so. I think so. I think you should Absolutely. be. You should be ashamed of yourself. Um, um, so let's talk about the exciting things then, because now we're going to get into the nitty gritty where we're looking at the top echelon of 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 talent and potential comebacks. So let's look at a list of potential comebacks that have not been announced here, and what Paddy Power, what way Paddy Powers are looking at it. Yeah. Um. First of all, I mean, this talk. I um, mean, potentially, I'm hearing that Cody hasn't signed a new contract. Yeah. So could we see Stardust coming back? Who oh, knows? Don't say that. No. Could happen. I don't well, think so. I don't that's... think Cody would lower himself to be coming back as Stardust. I'll be honest with you there. Well, that's 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 one of the the, the one that's out there. Really buttons either, buttons but it's from, right from, out, but it's I've right ten dislike buttons from many, many, many. So. <laughs> I don't know why they call those buttons dislikes anyway, because if you're interested, you're interested. You might not agree, but that doesn't matter. Any because publicity we're not all is good publicity, right? Or be very boring. Absolutely. Exactly. Uh, one that's been out there as well is Chris Jericho. And this could be one that could potentially make sense because we know he was welcomed back on the awesome podcast. And um, we know that he's still, you know, we know that he didn't really leave in a really, really bad way. And we know that he likes coming back. And I'm just wondering, with all the talk that's out there in terms of bringing the cost down and stuff like that, and everyone's talking about the potential sale, <clears throat> I wonder, does one Chris Jericho maybe fancy a piece of the Disney money? Who knows? Um, it's a one-off payment, it, isn't it? Could be, potentially, yeah. Um, another one that hasn't appeared on AEW TV, and you could probably confirm this for me, uh, one Jake Hager. So could we see Jack Swagger back there? Um, which could be an interesting dynamic and one that appeared in the betting which I thought was kind of out of left field there's been a lot of talk about New Japan's Jay White this week potentially coming in as well which would be a really interesting one um, if it was to potentially happen um, I also mentioned there's other ones out there that they, they talk about obviously we know Sasha Banks is out with the injury um, so she's not going to be there. We spoke about Paige. We spoke about Undertaker being in attendance, but potentially in relation to the game and stuff with 2K and stuff like that. Um, the Iconics have been muted out there as well, the two girls. Um, they could be back into the women's one. But there was also a little rumour out there in the ether today that I uncovered one Stephanie McMahon. Um, but I think that's probably a long shot. Um, Hopefully not, yeah. If it, if you look at the betting on this, and it's an interesting dynamic from Paddy Power again, the favourite to win it is Big E at 9-4, to four, um, which I kind of think is a kind of a weird dynamic insofar as he's only after coming out or dropping the belt. They're probably not overly pleased with the way it went, even though the guy earned it, but kind of we smoke a number of times on your podcast about how he needed to separate himself from the New Day and that you can't really carry the strap and still be pancakes and unicorns. It doesn't really stack up. Mm. Um, so I'm not too sure about that one. I wouldn't be putting my money there. Second favourite, which comes into the theory that I had earlier, Finley Martin, you're about to take the dislike button off this one. Brock Lesnar is second favourite to win the Royal Rumble at 5-1. to one. So is there something Paddy Power knows that we don't know, but we might have touched on? Um, so interesting. Yeah. Um, Third favourite is AJ Styles at 8-1. to one. Um, This is a man who's probably in need of a reboot, uh, signed a new contract and has kind of sucked it up a bit and done everything that the company has asked him to do. Paired him up with Omos and stuff like that and he got him going and stuff like that. But he's kind of been out there in the wilderness for about a year now. Super competitor, as we know. Certainly a man who could carry a title and a guy who never lets you down always gives you up around those four stars at least. Um, so he's in there. The one that you spoke about earlier, who is one, two, three, fourth favourite for the Rumble is no less The Rock, a 14 to one. So is there something else? We have heard that this forbidden door is, uh, forbidden door is open and that a huge star is going to return. And I'm praying... I know Ronda Rousey is going to return, hopefully, and we know we want her to return, but I'm hoping that she's not what they're describing as the huge star, that it is potentially the rock or something like that, which would be really cool. Um, 
Lashley is in there at 14 to 1. Another one that's an interesting one, Bray Wyatt is 14 to 1 as well. So himself, The Rock, and Lashley are all at the same price. Could the fiend return Bray Wyatt? He's been out there. We know he's gone. He's gone out into the wilderness, but hasn't done a whole lot wrestling wise. I know he's done a little bit of acting and stage stuff and things like that. But yeah, hasn't really a lot done of YouTube any wrestling. videos up though, to be fair to him. And he has exactly. a media company behind him. So mm. but I'm just I'm just thinking. Is a time potentially for him to return? But then I'm thinking, would he be that huge star that comes through the door? Is that how people would see it? No. Um, but it, it's just interesting. He hasn't thrown himself back into the ring as of yet. Um, so maybe. Um, I mentioned already Finn Balor um, between 18 and 20 to 1. John Cena, 20 to 1. He's on the list. And not the list of Jericho, but he's on the list. Um. 40 to 1, The Undertaker. So your fiver returns you 200. Could it happen? Could we that's, see? That's why, could, because it's not happening. <laughs> could Biker take it? Well, listen, long odds happen at times. Um, Jay White, I picked out some of the longer odds ones, obviously, as well, because there's no point in going through the Dawkins and the Seamuses and all these kind of ones all the time as well. Jay White is in there at 200 to 1. Obviously, for obvious reasons, but I mean, I don't think if Jay White does show up, it would be kind of cool if he's in the Rumble and obviously the New Japan connection and stuff like that. But to win the Royal Rumble, I think, would be an absolute stretch. Well, if um, you come down to Bray on Saturday, we'll give you 300 to 1 odds on Dynamo <laughs> making an appearance at the Rumble. <laughs> and yeah, these things will happen. Johnny Knoxville is in there at 200 to 1. I wonder, I wonder, would he be worth a punt? Each way, I think each way plays. I think the last four or five. I think is it conceivable that him going in there, big star? Now, doubt they're paying him absolute wheelbarrow loads of money to do this. Could he potentially be in the last four or five? If you get him a two hundred to one in each way, you're getting a quarter of the odds of fifty to one. Not a bad idea potentially. Yeah. Go ahead, Finn. Especially, Go ahead, especially. Finley. Hit that. Hit that dislike button again. <laughs> um. Round, rounding out a 250 to one, um, a man that's normally in the betting, even as, as stretched as it is, the ball rattlesnake himself, Stone Cold Steve Austin. <laughs> I knew He's in there at 251. That. Well, I, I kind of wanted to pick out the names with the bigger prices just to create a bit of fun about it. I don't think Stone Cold Steve Austin's going to show up. And if he did show up, I don't think he's going to win the Royal Rumble. And, if he, but, and he wouldn't show up unless he was going to win it. So, But... But we know that WrestleMania is in Dallas, and we know that Dallas is in Texas. So here's another dislike button. Um... <laughs> Keep on lighting them up, guys. I'm loving it. <laughs> um, that that's that's really it. That's what's been going around in the well, ether. We let's mentioned get down to the nitty gritty and... then of what could happen mm-hmm. as we wrap up. So personally, I I could potentially see the Rock coming back. There's been talk about it for a while. He's talked about it on, you know, numerous talk shows and stuff. And, you know, obviously with, with Reigns there, like, I mean, that would be a perfect kind of way for him to, to bow out. Or if he wanted a little three-month run with Reigns, you know what I mean? Just just to kind of get it out of the system and kind of say sayonara to the company. Yeah, I think that's the most realistic of all the comebacks. You know what I mean? Um, But... You, you've kind of got me thinking there now when I'm thinking of the list of men that are in there. I, I, I'm thinking between The Rock and potentially Brock just because of the way you, you said it. Now, Lashley wouldn't make any sense to me purely because I'm like, uh, I don't think... I know he had a decent run. I'm not being bad here, but I know he had a decent run, but you could see the fans were actually delighted that Brock won it. You know what I mean? Like, is he, is he that over as a babyface at the moment that, that it's going to blow the roof off the joint? Or are WWE thinking that they couldn't get the rock over the line and that they're going to make the women's Royal Rumble be the main one? And that's when you get the stare down with Becky and Ronda. So, I mean, it's something to think there, isn't there? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, it, it's an interesting dynamic. I mean, I mean, I, I'm I'm not sure what way to look at it because there's kind of there's kind of little storylines that will stem out into Mania within this match. So you're gonna get a number of layers in this. You know, I mean, we spoke about Dominic and Ray, obviously, hundred percent being one. There's no doubt about it. Yeah. I would be shocked if something doesn't come out of that some sort of a turn. 
Um, because I find when you do those father and son things as well, they're kind of they get a bit stale when you're all happy going along and winning matches and stuff like that. Eventually, someone has to turn. The one thing I would say about the Royal Rumble, and we haven't mentioned it so far, we know it's in St. Louis in Missouri, which is the home of one Viper Randy Orton. So, we would be happy is with this, that. Is this where we get the turn on the tag team? Is this where Riddle and Orton potentially? Is this where the legend killer comes back? Is this where the Viper strikes? Well, I mean, you're talking about another man like that you mentioned in AJ Styles that has kind of done what the company have asked of him, but is an absolute elite. I mean, I'm sorry, you know, I'm probably going to shit on people's bonfire here or piss on their chips or whatever analogy you want to use, but Randy Orton's a bigger star and a better in-ring performer. And like, if given the right direction, it's far more entertaining for me than the likes of Lashley or, you know, Biggie or um, a lot of these guys or even Seth Rollins and stuff like that. You know what I mean? So he would 100% should be and is a main event level talent. So, I mean, what odds would you get on Orton? He isn't mentioned in it for the simple reason, as far as I know, believe it or not, he's, I think he's involved in a tag match. And I so think do you think that's going to be a mania thing then, that swerve? Well, what I'm saying is he's not mentioned right now. That's not to say he ain't going to go into the Royal Yeah, League. and he's not going to win it um, because obviously if he turns on, on Riddle, then that's your Mania match, right? Yeah, yeah but I, I assume that would have to have, have to happen in a Rumble. They're not going to give that away, surely. On a, I, I'm not sure. It, it, it's still to be ironed out in terms of the, the card, but the talk is that's going to be a pre-show match. That tag match, and I, I don't think you're going to give away that that move on a pre-show match. So my thinking no. is that maybe if that goes wrong for them, the two boys are backstage having a bit of a squabble about the tag match, and Adam Pearce or someone rocks up and goes, "Hey boys, we're looking for a few guys for the Royal Rumble. Do you want to jump in?" Two boys jump in, and maybe that's where you get a one eliminates the other, and then you have either the goofy Riddle going laughing at eliminating Orton, or you have Orton eliminating him like the Viper. And Riddle besotted by himself on the ground. Can't believe this has happened. He's he's traded this guy. He's put him up on such a pedestal. You know, this is his mentor, really. This is the way it's been. Riddle has portrayed himself as being the fanboy in this tag team when you think about it. Yeah. So there's an interesting dynamic in that as well. May not lead to a Rumble win, but could lead to another interesting storyline heading into the road to WrestleMania. Right, um, well then, as we do wrap up, who, all your chips are in. Who's winning the Rumble for you? Lesnar. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to sit on the fence because it's my show and I can do what I want. And I'll... Uh... Well, you've talked up The Rock. So if The Rock shows up, you have to go all in on The Rock, don't you? You're pushing all the chips on I'm the gonna say The Rock. On the yeah, rock I'm going right? to say The Rock. I want to get people excited on this show. I'm going to say The Rock. Yeah. And, um, well, that's that's the fear on this forbidden door. They built us up in this forbidden door. They said there's a huge star going to walk through this door. No one's bigger than the Rock, are they? <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> and the Rock ain't coming back to go into a Royal Rumble match to be thrown over the top rope. No, that ain't gonna happen either. So, right. um, so you're saying Brock? I'm saying Rock. That's what I'm thinking. Okay. I think Lashley may pick up the belt again. And I think Brock may go after Reigns through the Rumble route. That's what I'm thinking. Okay. Well, Noel, you've done some great work, um, in in especially researching the bet nods and stuff like that, and kind of it's been a pleasure. Obviously, as always, that's going to be fun. Obviously, we're going to do a reaction video yeah. and see what way we uh, do we have egg on our face or were we a little bit close or not. Mm. But either way, we've uh, we've stirred up some excitement, and also, also. Just to stir up a little bit of excitement, we did say that we would have an announcement for a guest next week. And I also mentioned that we do have, obviously we're two shows a week now, guys and girls. So we do have Sonny Ono on Tuesday. But next Thursday, next Thursday, so for all of you people out there in, uh, you know, in Statsland, next Thursday is, I'm going to get the date for you, um, and, is, and speaking, course, speaking, speaking of blown the forbidden door off the hinges on YouTube on the Dynamo's Dozen YouTube channel. Who have we got? Who have you got? We have on the fourth or the third. Well, it'll be the fourth for the United States listeners, possibly. 
or for some of our international listeners, depending on where you are in the world, on the 3rd slash the 4th of February, next week, we have the most controversial man in the history of professional wrestling, I dare say, Vince Russo is going to be on the show. Bro, bro. Yes. Nice. Great you've guest. Got, you've got two sure. bro guys now, because I say bro a lot, but I don't say in the New oh, York yeah. accent. Bro, 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 bro. So, yeah, Vince is um, is going to be on the show. Um, it's going to be a longer show, so we're going to be speaking for about an hour. Um, I will be asking everything that you can think of and more. Um, this is going to be a proper, proper shoot type conversation. Um, I will be mentioning certain things that I've mentioned in the past. I'm going to say it right now, I will not be copping out of anything. But uh, myself and Vince have had a bit of a relationship over the years, as you know. But um, at the same time, I'm going to be putting some uh, some difficult questions to Vince. And uh, who knows where that may lead. Absolutely. An absolute super guest and a man who has seen it all, been in the trenches, done it all. Um, certainly has experienced the highs and the lows of this business without a shadow of a doubt. And I, and I suppose there's an interesting dynamic for that one as well. We do have a couple of dynamos, dozen mugs lying around. So what we should do, I just came up with a little idea there on the fly is for that episode, we're going to encourage our viewers to do a bro count. And whoever gets the count of how many times bro is mentioned on that interview, wins a dynamos, dozen coffee mug. How about that? And we'll send it to you. We will post it to you wherever you are in the world. If you're living too far away from Ireland, it might arrive in a few pieces, but nonetheless, <laughs> we have made the effort. But if yes. you're living in Ireland or England, it will come intact. There's no doubt about it. Little dynamic there for your viewers. We have a Dynamo's dozen mug lying around that we want to find a home for. And it's based on a bro count for that interview with Vince Russo. Your answers have to be in the comments. You also have to have liked, shared and subscribed to the channel. Which we will share in our social media, but you will have to have shared, liked, subscribed to the channel. 100%. 100%. Um, Absolutely. Noel, that is very kind of you, as, as no always. Problem. You're a special, a very, very special guest. You are you are part of the furniture here now. Um, you're the mug that we drink out of. <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> that good chalice. That chalice of life. That chalice of life. <laughs> Listen, it's been a pleasure. I think everyone should be excited for this uh, this weekend's Royal Rumble. I think it's going to be... I, I, look, if it's not a stellar show, it's something that you are definitely going to watch. It's something that you've got to be intrigued by. Um, you know, if Dwayne Johnson shows up, you know, if Ronda Rousey shows up, hell, if Shawn Michaels and Brett the Hitman Hart show up, <laughs> it's going to be fun. And, um, and, and not only that, it's the only one of the big four that I always stress that has kept true to its legacy and its history. Always, always, always. Bar down to a Saturday, but that works for us. It's the only thing. It's the only that's, thing that's ever. a great move. It's yeah. the only thing they've but ever you changed. That, you got that, you know, you might get that blend of that Saturday night's main event with a Royal Rumble. So maybe, you, I'm maybe we're in. And a lot of nostalgia potentially with some comebacks. So it could 100%. be very interesting. 100%. Well, Noel, until next week, um, we'll probably have three shows next week. As I mentioned, Sonny Ono will be on Tuesday. Um, I think we'll probably do a, um, a Royal Rumble review, review which will drop yeah. on Wednesday. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you're getting a bonus show next week, motherfuckers. So do like and subscribe. And then, of course, Bombshell announcement, bombshell announcement of Vince Russo talking to Ian the Dynamo Kelly, two of the most opinionated men with completely different views on pro wrestling. Let me preface this by saying this to you. Two completely different views on professional wrestling. What will I ask him? What will what way will he react? You're going to have to tune in and subscribe. How, how tepid was that water around the swimming pool in mm. Vince's house? That's it. This could be an hour show, which it's scheduled to be, or it could be a 10-minute show. But either way, if it's a 10-minute show, you're going to watch, want to watch that 10 minutes. If it's an hour show, 
you're going to want to watch that hour. So the, the longer, the better for your brow count competition. That's for sure. 100%. 100%. Who can get more brows in, me or him? <laughs> 100% him without a shadow of a deal. Without 100%. It'll be all pal from me. Yeah. <laughs> if, you, if you match him by a fifth, I'll be doing well. For his 100, you'll get 20, I'd say. Because I, everything with him, he starts and finishes everything with a bro. Yeah, if I match him for a fifth and someone actually gets what I get, I will actually send you a PayPal five euro. There you go. That's it. If anyone can guess how many bros, I will say. And if it is by a fifth, as Niall said, I will actually PayPal you five euro. There you go. And you'll have my email address and you can riddled me out of it like <laughs> absolutely <laughs> you can share it on the internet with your friends and everything it's grand I've about 20 emails so it's all good um now it's been a pleasure Noel um been a great show as always hopefully yeah. we've got people excited for the Royal Rumble because it should be an exciting show many many possibilities and until next week for me in the Dynamo Kelly for himself the master of the football podcast, Mr. Noel Hogan. Go check him out on the upper tier if you are a football fan. Please like and subscribe as well. Um, absolutely fantastic show. The only football show you want to listen to for your uh, bets for the weekend, um, for your previews, your reviews, and everything in between. Noel Hogan and the upper tier podcast, of course. Noel, do you want to tell them where they can find you on your socials? We're on YouTube on the upper tier. And we also have a Liverpool podcast on there, the Shankly Sessions. You'll get us on Gmail, the upper tier podcast, Facebook and Instagram, the upper tier, on Twitter at the underscore upper underscore tier. We're out on TikTok as well, having a lot of fun. Darren, my boy Dazzler, he's getting lit up on TikTok at the moment with his views and opinions out there, the upper tier podcast. Um, I think that's it all covered. I think actually, yeah, yeah that's 100%. it basically. Yeah, hundred percent, absolutely. And of course, and if you're not sure. excited, if you're not excited about the Royal Rumble, then fuck off and find something else to follow. Yeah, what are you watching for? All right, that's until next absolutely. week. For me, in the Dolomo Kelly, for Noel, the shopkeeper, Pleasure, Hogan, my friend, all school. We are over and out. Enjoy the matches. <laughs>